Can you imagine a project so massive it could power an entire country for a year? But it's so complex, it sits in one of the most remote and dangerous locations on Earth? Welcome to China's $100 billion Himalayan Mega Dam. Nestled in the secluded Tibetan Plateau, surrounded by towering peaks and deep gorges, this hydroelectric endeavor promises unparalleled power and potential. But what risks and geopolitical ramifications accompany such an ambitious venture? Today, we're diving deep into China's audacious plan to build the world's most powerful dam and uncovering the intricate details and challenges that lie ahead. In the remote corners of the Tibetan Plateau, amidst some of the world's tallest mountains and deepest gorges, China is planning the world's most complicated super dam. This project, the biggest hydroelectric endeavor we've ever seen, could provide China with enough clean electricity to power the entire UK for a year. But the ideal location is one of the most inaccessible gorges in Tibet. A project of this size could shift the geopolitical power balance across South Asia, if the earthquakes don't interfere, that is. China has a history of impressive engineering feats. For the past 70 years, they've broken records in almost every industry, building more and bigger than most competitors. Hydropower is no exception. China currently has about 87,000 dams due to its necessity for water management. With a population of 1.4 billion people, they've redirected many major rivers to boost development, showing their familiarity with hydro mega projects. However, their current project dwarfs everything else, even the Three Gorges Dam. There have been some wild plans for this project. Initially, one suggestion was to use a nuclear weapon to blast through the mountains to make way for the dam. Thankfully, the Chinese government dismissed this idea. The potential for hydropower here is unmatched, but harnessing it is incredibly challenging. Dr. Ruth Gamble, an expert on the environmental, cultural, and climate history of Tibet, the Himalayas, and Asia, has provided insights into the challenges and potential of this mega project. Yarlong Sangpo River is where China plans to develop a 60 gigawatt super dam capable of producing three times as much electricity as the world's current largest dam. If completed, this project would harness the natural power of one of Asia's largest rivers, producing enough clean electricity for tens of millions of people. Successfully executing this would be an engineering triumph, even for China. Not just because of its size, but because the dam is to be built in a remote, wild part of China that few foreigners ever visit. The mountainous area is prone to natural disasters, and transporting construction materials there is a significant challenge. China's neighbors, India and Bangladesh, share the same river that China wants to build on. They're concerned that a project of this magnitude could severely impact their access to water, especially with the increasing unpredictability of water flow due to climate change. It's astonishing that China is even considering this project. China's electricity needs are vast, twice as much as the USA and eight times as much as Russia. Currently, most of China's electricity is generated by burning coal, which is the dirtiest way possible, producing massive emissions. To move towards net zero and meet rising electricity demands, China is investing in renewable energy sources, including solar panels, wind turbines, tidal power, and hydroelectric dams. Since the 1950s, China has built tens of thousands of dams, including the world's largest and most powerful hydroelectric facility, the Three Gorges Dam. Now, after damming most of their internal rivers, China is focusing on the major international rivers, thanks to the Tibetan Plateau. With an average altitude of over 4,500 meters, the Tibetan Plateau towers above Asia, covering an area five times larger than France. This altitude means it's filled with glaciers and ice, earning it the nickname Earth's Third Pole. The melting ice forms many of the region's largest and most important rivers, like the Indus, Ganges, Mekong, and Yarlong Sangpo, making it the Water Tower of Asia. These rivers are not just habitation sites, they're also the largest agricultural regions in all the countries they traverse, from Pakistan to India, to Southeast Asia and China. These rivers are crucial for food production, meaning control over the Tibetan Plateau equates to control over the water supply for half the world's population. China's target for this mega dam is the Yarlong Sangpo River, also known as the Siang and Brahmaputra in other countries. This river, filled with white water and waterfalls, is often called the Everest of rivers. It starts at the Yangtze Glacier 
and flows over 1,000 kilometers east until it reaches Namchabara Mountain, then turns south into India and Bangladesh before emptying into the Indian Ocean. The river is the highest major river in the world and almost 3,000 kilometers long. The exact location for the dam is the Yarlong Sangpo Gorge, a sacred place in Tibetan culture, believed to contain a hidden entrance to the spirit world. Different ethnic groups live within the gorge, Tibetans in the north, Adi people in the south, and Bopa in between. The Tibetans believe that a goddess's head rests on the Tibetan plateau. Her body curves around the river bends, and her feet end up at the Assamese plains, making the river a sacred embodied goddess. However, China's interest lies not in the spiritual significance, but in the unique geography. The river descends rapidly through the gorge, dropping more than 2,000 meters in altitude as it curves around the 7.7-kilometer-tall Namcha Bara Mountain in a massive arc known as the Great Bend. For comparison, the Grand Canyon is only 1,857 meters deep, making the Yarlong Sangpo Gorge three times deeper from riverbed to mountain bank. This steep descent provides immense potential for hydropower. The gorge's remoteness and natural biodiversity add to the challenges. Scientists are still discovering new species in this region every year. Building a dam here without destroying the biodiversity is a significant challenge. Two main approaches have been suggested for this project. One is to build a cascade of dams down the gorge, which would severely impact the biodiversity. The other is to dig a tunnel from the highest to the lowest point of the river, allowing water to flow through and generate power. This second option seems more likely, although it also poses challenges, such as the potential impact on downstream regions near the Indian border. The area is prone to massive earthquakes. The Yarlong Sangpo Gorge sits on the Indat Sangpo Suture Zone, resulting from India colliding with Asia over 50 million years ago. The tectonic plates still cause significant seismic activity. In 1950, an 8.6 magnitude earthquake hit the region, causing landslides that blocked the Yarlong Sangpo for eight days. When the natural dam broke, it created a seven-meter high wave, killing over 500 people. Similar earthquakes have occurred multiple times throughout the 20th century, raising concerns about the dam's safety. Despite challenges, the Chinese government is determined to proceed with the dam project. It could produce up to 300 billion kilowatt hours of electricity annually, three times that of the Three Gorges Dam. The plan involves boring a tunnel through Namcha Bara Mountain and cutting the Great Bend. This monumental construction, potentially as long as the Channel Tunnel, could carry 2,000 cubic meters of water per second through a series of hydroelectric facilities, utilizing a run-of-the-river system in an unprecedented manner. China's $100 billion Himalayan Mega Dam is an engineering marvel, fraught with environmental, geopolitical, and logistical challenges. The potential benefits in terms of renewable energy and geopolitical power are immense. But so are the risks. The project's success hinges on navigating these challenges without causing irreversible damage to the region's biodiversity or exacerbating geopolitical tensions. If you found this video informative, then don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.